In this video, we examine the liquid-to-gas phase transition at both the qualitative and the quantitative level. All right, let's think about a liquid and uh, the equilibrium with a gas formed by the liquid. Okay, so suppose that you have a liquid uh, in this glass, right here, and then uh, this could be whatever you wish, and then what you do is you evacuate uh, all of the gas that you have on top of the liquid, and then let it equilibrate. What will happen is that once you uh, cap that uh, flask, there will be molecules of the liquid that are actually uh, are in the gas phase. Okay, so what it means is that uh, uh, at any particular temperature, there's always an equilibrium between the liquid and some of uh, some gas molecules from that liquid, uh, which are at equilibrium right here. Okay, so there is an equilibrium uh, taking place. Okay, so the uh, pressure. The, of, the, uh, of the gas that you get after that equilibrium is formed is what we call the vapor pressure of a liquid. As you can imagine, uh, the vapor pressure of a liquid depends on how strongly uh, the liquid molecules are interacting with, uh, with each other. If you have very strong interactions in the liquid, like hydrogen bonds and so forth, then the vapor pressure will be very low. But if interactions between the liquid molecules are very weak, then the vapor pressure will be much higher. Okay, so for example, we can examine how the vapor pressures will differ for uh, two liquids. One of them is ethanol, and another one is dimethyl ether. Notice that these two molecules have exactly the same molar mass, but very different intermolecular interactions. Right? Notice that here, in ethanol, you have the ability to form a hydrogen bond. However, in dimethyl ether, you uh, uh, cannot donate a hydrogen bond. You have a, a very strong polar uh, bond right there. So the interactions uh, within diethyl, dimethyl ether molecules are very are, are weak, and those between uh, ethanol are much greater. What that would mean is that the vapor pressure, which we could call PVAP, here would be quite low, and here you would have it being very high. Okay, and again, that is connected to the uh, intermolecular interactions that you have within the liquid. Now, uh, something that is uh, important to realize is that these uh, gas molecules uh, are actually there due to entropy. Right? Notice that when you have a liquid, uh, uh, those molecules are actually uh, very close to each other, and we know that a gas is more entropic. Right? So notice that if the liquid uh, uh, puts, molecule in the, puts molecules in the gas phase, the entropy is increasing. Right, so here you have that there's a, 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 a kind of a battle in between two effects. One of them is the attractions between the molecules in the liquid, and another one is the gaining entropy if you put the molecules in the gas phase. Right, so uh, the balance between those two forces determines what the true vapor pressure of a given liquid is. Now, something that is important following those arguments is that if you were to increase the temperature of the liquid, then uh, there's more thermal motion and then there's a larger ability to break the interactions within the liquid and uh, uh, have uh, a larger vapor pressure. Right? So there is a, a positive correlation between the vapor pressure of the liquid and the temperature. The harder the liquid is, the larger the vapor pressure. And generally, uh, that relationship uh, is logarithmic, or in this case, it, it would actually be exponential. Right? So the, uh, what you have is that that will be the, how the vapor pressure of a liquid changes with temperature. Suppose that this is um, uh, dimethyl ether, and this will be ethanol, right? So if we're, say, at, at room temperature right here, that is that ethanol, uh, which is this one, will have a much lower vapor pressure than what uh, dimethyl ether would have, right, as, as we have anticipated. And again, the growth of these, uh, of these lines is actually uh, exponential. Right. Now, something that is quite important is that uh, there's a very special point in this curve which happens when you get to one atmosphere. Okay, so notice that if you continue to increase the vapor pressure uh, with temperature, eventually you will get uh, something that is uh, atmospheric pressure, okay, one atmosphere. This is uh, PATM. At that point, what happens is that the liquid boils. Okay, the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, and that uh, leads to boiling of the liquid. So these points that we have right here, okay, that point and that point, those are what we call the normal 
boiling point of the liquid. Okay, and again, the important definition of that uh, normal boiling point is that that is the point at which the vapor pressure of the liquid equals uh, the external pressure, which is generally one atmosphere uh, for all of our work. Now, a question here is whether we can quantitatively uh, determine what the variation of the vapor pressure with temperature is. And it turns out that uh, we can do that uh, fairly easily, just recollecting that uh, this is actually an equilibrium. Right? So we can take all of the knowledge that we have gathered in our equilibrium studies uh, uh, to figure out what the, this variation of the pressure with the temperature is at a quantitative level. All right, so uh, to do that, we actually have to uh, incorporate here the concept of the enthalpy of the phase change. Okay, so notice that these uh, interactions between the uh, liquid molecules and how much energy it takes to go into the gas phase that is also governed by something that we call the enthalpy of vaporization, okay, which is this um, term that we have right here. And notice that uh, the enthalpy of vaporization runs counter to the vapor pressure. In ethanol, if these interactions are very strong, that means that you have to supply quite a bit of energy in order to vaporize those liquid molecules. So this one will be high. And then in ether, if those molecules are, are interacting very weakly, then you're not going to have to supply a lot of energy to vaporize that liquid. Right here you will have that the enthalpy of vaporization will be quite low. All right, so uh, from here we're actually going to be able to determine a relationship between uh, the vapor pressure uh, of the liquid and its temperature. All right, the way that we're going to do it is by recognizing that uh, the equilibrium looks like this. I'm going to do it now for uh, liquid water going into the gas, just for simplicity. Okay, notice that if we were able to uh, write what the equilibrium constant for the liquid to gas equilibrium uh, is, we will have here the activity of the gas over the activity of the liquid. The activity of the gas is simply the pressure of the gas divided by the reference pressure, but that is one atmosphere, and then the acti activity of the liquid is equal to one. So notice that this is simply uh, the equilibrium constant for the liquid to gas phase transition is simply the vapor pressure of the liquid, okay? And it turns out that we actually know quite well how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature. That's something that we have studied. Remember that there is an equation which tells you how the equilibrium constant changes with temperature, and that is rela related to the enthalpy of the process. Okay, one over T2 minus one over T1, okay? So we can actually apply this uh, change in the equilibrium constant with temperature to our equilibrium, which in this case is just a phase transition, to recognize that, well, this case now are simply going to be the vapor pressures of the two different temperatures, uh, P21, P1, okay? And then these temperatures will just be the temperatures at which we want to calculate uh, uh, those vapor pressures. And then this enthalpy is simply going to be the enthalpy of the process, but in this case, it's just the vaporization. So this is simply the enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, so from that equation, you can actually quantitatively calculate how much the vapor pressure changes uh, as you go from the liquid uh, into the gas phase.